and welcome back to AR-77 Airgun Replicas 77 and today we are looking at the Walther CP-88 by Umarex this is a CO2 powered 0.177 pellet shooting air pistol and it's a beauty so this is a replica of the P-88 um, by Walther Beautiful looking gun, really nice sized pistol. Um, we have it here in the kind of nickel finish. Uh, I can't, <laughs> I wanted this gun for so long and couldn't find one that wasn't extortionate. I couldn't find one that was kind of under the £200 mark. <clears throat> and then in my local shop, this came up. And it was second hand, so it's been used before, but it was a really good deal. And I literally just said, while it's there, I've got to have it. So I got it. And now it's mine. And I'm really pleased. Really pleased. Um, yeah, let's look at it. It's a beautiful gun, as you can see. Lovely, lovely, lovely uh, finish to it. And I really like it, like on, on like the early 1911s and... Uh, for like the Tanfoglio Witness or the um, the Remington RAC, the first in initial one, when they don't have a Picatinny, uh, it's just something about it. I just think the lines look a lot nicer. It's like, you know, in some cars, you're going to disagree with me here, but some cars look better without a spoiler. They're just the lines of the car look nice anyway, and they don't need that uh, if it's just for cosmetic benefit you know um, and th these these just look gorgeous um, so this is nickel with black grips you can get the same pistol in black with black grips or you can buy wood grips for these and replace the wood grips which is that's the instinctive thing to do because the wood grips look amazing they look gorgeous I think the walnut <sighs> having said that there's always that kind of, mm, I'm not sure, because I like, you know, all the black details and then wood grips. I don't know. If it was all silver, I'd probably go for the wood grips, but I like the fact that there's this contrast. I've said that about a few pistols now, like the desert ones that have got the sort of black details, like the 19X. And similarly here, I like the black details with the black grips. That's just my personal preference. Just my personal preference. And you can get it in this kind of competition version where they've got a bit of a... A muzzle extension on here, which mimics what you would have on a competition pistol to allow muzzle flare to escape, um, meaning that the recoil wouldn't be just as strong and you can get your gun back on, on target quicker. I believe that's the case anyway. Let's have a look then at the Walther CP88 by Umarex. I don't know why they call it CP88, because it's just P88 in real life. Um, and they call the other ones P99 and... All that malarkey. So I don't know. Maybe you can tell me. Competition pistol, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so you've got takedown lever here. I'll talk about these in a second. Takedown lever does function, but not in the way you would expect. Slide catch release, non-functioning, but they've made it silver, so it doesn't, doesn't stand out. That's quite nice. Um, you've got this lovely, quite well, flared, extended, kind of almost heart-shaped trigger guard here. Um, really nice, that. Really nice. You've got your magazine release. That works, but again, doesn't function as you would expect. Uh, you've got your safety here, so you're safe. Now you are unsafe. Um, you've got this. It looks like it's a cut-out ejection port, but it's not. This is a solid piece of metal. Look at that look at that, the groove, look at the lines on this gun. It's gorgeous. Uh, so that's one piece of metal. I'll show you that in a second. You, these guns are not new, so you, there's probably no surprises for any of you enthusiasts in what I'm showing you here. Um, but I'll come to them as I come to them, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice grip. Um, a bit of grip at the front there. Um, it's a it's a solid gun. It's full metal. 
so it's got a really good weight to it. There's just something about it that I think is just the aesthetically just a really attractive pistol. Um, got lovely Walther markings there, just etched into the slide. A really straightforward, does its job pistol. Let's have a look round at the front then, as we come round here. So you've got your recessed barrel, which is nice. You've got that uh, guide rod there, doesn't do anything. Well, probably, probably does serve as a guide, actually. I'll show you that in a bit. In a bit. Uh, on this side, made in Germany. So this is one of the better pellet pistols you can get, I would say. One of the better ones. I mean, the SIGs are all great. They're, they're fantastic. And the, the CZ pellet pistols, the PO7s, I think it is, all fantastic. But these Umarex ones made in Germany, like this and the Beretta 92FS. The, there's also a 1911. They're really good, really well made, really solid. Uh, and I think are real Collector's items. I hesitate to say that because although the collector's items, I don't think they should just sit in your lockbox or your wardrobe or wherever you keep them safely with a lock on, but they should be out in your garden or arranged somewhere that you've made shooting at stuff, tin cans, toy soldiers, whatever. They should be out there and being driven, I think. So you've got your lovely red dot there on your safety, on your ambidextrous safety. Let's come around to the back. Unremarkable sights, possibly because of the age of the pistol, the actual P88 itself. You know, I mean, there's a lot of movement in that trough there. So it's not going to be the most accurate. And there's no white dot, but like I say, I think that might be more to do with the age of the pistol itself. So, how does it work? Well, CO2 powered, as you know, and it's single or double action. So, in double action, you pull the trigger. There's no CO2 or pellets in this. Pull the trigger. And that's some effort, some effort to pull that trigger, push the hand back and fire in double action. Or you cock the hammer and then you're ready for single action. You see it engages the uh, trigger, pulls it a bit further back, gets you ready for action. And then that one, lovely, lovely. Still some weight to it, but you go up to there. That's where your wall is. And then it releases. Once again, reliable, click, there you go. And it feels authentic. So where do you put your pellets? Well, here's your what would be your takedown lever. And you just press that down. Oh, let me do this. Let me do this without, uh, that's it. I don't like it to sort of spring forward. I like to try and protect these things. So you press that down and the whole thing goes forward like that. Uh, re revealing the sort of the breach, really. And there's your. Can I? How close can I get to that? There's your rifled barrel. Can we get it from this? Not enough light shining in there, but it is a rifled barrel, so you will get there you go, a bit better accuracy. Um, so where your CO2 is released, and. What you do is you pick up one of these bad boys, which the gun comes with, well, mine came with two, and I bought another two because they, you go through them so quickly. So these are eight round uh, cylinders, if you will. So you load your pellets up, you can see there's a, you see, there's a, it's kind of bigger at the back here. So, and that, you see, focus. Yes. Yeah, so you can see the notches in the centre of that sphere they engage, and these bits around the outside engage inside there and turn that round as you take each shot. So you load your pellets in this way, and they come out this way, this way, yeah, this way. No, nope, that looked wrong. This way. <laughs> yeah, they come out from that end, that side, and they go that way. So Take that, you load it up with eight. What I would do is I'd load one, two, and then four. I would do load four with eight. Drop it in with the 
this bigger side to the rear. You don't have to be too careful with that. It will engage, it will, you know, it will find its way. And then because you've got, obviously you've got like this, these um, slide serrations here, and you've got some at the front, which you wouldn't have on the P88. I think they're because of this breach kind of extending out the front on the on the pellet pistol. So that's just a good opportunity for you to not, as you can see, it's not loaded. There's nothing in it. Not put your hand in front of it like that. Don't do what I've just done. Grab it there and close it that way or from beneath. Put it that way and it'll close. And you're almost ready to go. But you'll need fuel. And in this case, we mean CO2. So you would normally push that down and your magazine would drop out of the bottom. But in this case, you push it from the other side <laughs> and it pops off like that. So there's your handle, your your grips, your, your pistol grip. Here's the cavity that's left. So first of all, you will release the pressure that's on that. Screw this right down to the bottom. Find a CO2 capsule, which I don't have in front of me, uh, and put that in. So you'll engage that with the, you see the valve there. That was focused. Ah, there you go. Then you take this lovely brass screw here, tighten that up as much as you possibly can. As much as you can until you can't go any further. And make it really nice and tight. And there, your CO2 will be in there, held nice and tight. And the last thing to do is just pierce it by then just adding some pressure to the bottom here. Push that up. It won't go up that easily, but you can see how that just adds the last little nudge to pierce the capsule. Then you're good to go. Take your grip and carefully seat that back in place. And seamless, all nice and clean. No Allen keys needed or anything like that. Accurate? Yes, accurate enough. As accurate as you would need a pellet pistol to be for plinking. That's all this is for. It won't hunt. It's not powerful enough for that. It's not accurate enough for that. Don't do that. Um, it's powerful in that there's no blowback. So all your CO2 goes to pushing that pellet out of the pistol. That said, don't expect, again, don't expect hunting performance from this. It's literally going to put a hole in a can or knock a can over or put a hole in some paper. But it will do that all day long. <laughs> and that is great fun. And that is all it needs to do. I know it's an expensive piece of, piece of kit, but you're buying it for the engineering. You're buying it for a bit of history. You're buying it because it looks so accurate. You're buying it because you like how these things feel. You're buying it because it's full metal and it's made with German precision. You're buying it because you like cocking that hammer and seeing that trigger go back. You like shooting that hole in that target or that drawing of a zombie that you put down range or whatever it is. It feels lovely and it is one of the favourite, one of my favourite pistols in my collection. There you go. That, ladies and gentlemen, is... The Humorex Walther CP88 CO2 powered 0.177 pellet shooting air pistol. And it is a replica of the Walther P88 and a very good replica at that. What will this cost you? Well, as I said before, if you're lucky, you'll get one for about 150 quid. And if you see one at 150 quid, buy it.